Hey guys, what's up? Today I'm starting a new project and I thought I'd make a video series to bring you along with me as I try and solve this tough problem. The problem I'm trying to solve is the creation of a two-dimensional terrain map without using any physical parts and just using the visual display and Fizzy. To give you an idea of what I'm trying to do, you can look at the background here where you can see a two-dimensional grid of columns and rows each with a specific value and then a color code assigned to that value. If you can imagine this, the red parts would be maybe something like mountains uh, trailing off into the blue parts, which would be sort of flatlands. That's the idea that I'm going for. Who knows if it'll work or not, but we're gonna give it a shot. So in order to solve this larger problem, I've tried to break it down into a few smaller problems. And then I coded those problems based on what I think will be their overall difficulty. Starting with the easiest problems, then some, you know, maybe medium hard problems or hard-ish, and then the hardest problems of all. Today, we're just going to solve these two easy problems, and then later on, we'll build up and finish up the hard-ish and hard problems to create a finished product. So the two easy problems, the first one is text coloring using the Text Mesh Pro formatting. What I'm going to have to do to build up a two-dimensional map of colors is actually individually color pixels or characters and then place those on a grid in the actual user interface. To do this, I'm going to use Text Mesh Pro formatting, which I'll introduce you to in a bit. The second problem, which seems really straightforward but actually has some nuance to it, is calculating the ground height above sea level for a given position. I'll explain later why that's more complex than it seems, but for right now, just trust me. So let's head over into Simple Rockets and we can start to go through these two problems. So to get started, I've created a new basic rocket here that we'll be using for our testing, but let's get straight into Visi, which is where the real work is gonna happen. So I've already created a script that covers the two easy problems, but we're gonna walk through it step by step so we all understand what's going on here. The first line of code here is to create a list of colors that I'm going to use for coloring the text here. In order to understand this portion, you've got to have a basic understanding of hexadecimal codes and how they correspond to colors. So because I want this to be a really colorful script, I've coded these five values here in the list to the reverse order rainbow colors. Uh, so the next list I create here is the altitude list. All I'm trying to do here is create a list of values that correspond to those matching color values. So again, I just did it in increments of 200 meters and I took it up to 800 because I know the launch location we're gonna be using has a ground height of about 600 meters. The next line here is the pixel character. We'll use that later. It's not really gonna come into play for this script. Next up, I create a while true loop, which is just a way of saying, do this thing forever, don't ever stop. The first line of code here is how I'm actually getting the ground height of our position. And you'll see here, it's a fairly complex formula. And you may be wondering at this point, why don't you just use a much simpler version of this, like this, altitude sea level minus altitude ground level, and you're done. Well, the reason is that doesn't really work. And I'm going to demonstrate to you guys why. So let's go ahead and run the rest of this script. I have the rest of it working already just so I can demonstrate to you why this doesn't work, but it's important to understand. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run this. And with my test craft here, I'm just gonna launch it. And you'll see there that the height is 600 meters. And just to demonstrate to you, I'm gonna pause the script really quickly here. The AGL is 1407. The ASL is 2007, so perfect. 600 meters ground height above sea level. It, that part at least is working really well. I'm gonna show you what happens as we get higher and higher. So I'm gonna fast forward the script till we get up to a certain point. Okay, you notice now I'm at 16,000 meters. Watch the 600. Did you see how it went? from 600 straight down to zero as soon as I cross the 20,000 meter threshold? Well, that's because as you cross that 20,000 meter threshold, the game doesn't really care about ground level and sea level anymore. 
it kind of sets them to be the same thing. And that does not work well for our purposes here. So we've got to go revamp that. Let's do it. Okay, back into this script. I'm going to go ahead and trash that line of code because I know it's not going to work. And I'm going to pull in my next line one piece at a time. So the first piece here that I want to highlight is this line. What this line is doing is taking the vector position of your craft relative to the center of the planet and taking the length of that vector, which just says how far away from the center am I? And in this case, it's going to be something like 26,000 meters or something like that. It doesn't really matter because we're going to immediately subtract the radius of the planet from that value. And the radius of the planet is equal to the sea level of the planet. So if I take the length of that vector minus the radius of that planet, boom, that's my sea level. Next line here, I'm taking that same vector from the center of the planet, converting it to a latitude longitude above ground level vector, and then just taking the Z component, which is the above ground level. Now you just gotta trust me that that works no matter what your altitude from the planet is. So. This is basically the same formula I showed you before, but instead of using those out of the box altitude features, I'm doing it directly from the vector math. So I'm gonna pop that back in there. Let's just go ahead and show you that it does work. Okay, I've crossed that 20,000 threshold now and I'm staying steady at 600. So no matter how high I go, this is gonna work. Perfect, back to the script. All right, now I'm gonna build up the rest of this. The next major component is this for loop. Now we probably won't end up using this in the final version of the code, but it's still helpful in these short-term testing phases. So what this list is doing is it's saying, for values from one to the length of the altitude list, which is five, so from one to five, just step through the code and change the value of i by one each time. So all it's doing is saying, each time you step through this, compare your ground height to the item in the altitude list, and as soon as you find one that's less than the altitude list, break the code, set the index to that value minus one. So. For instance, if I have an altitude of 500 meters, the code is going to say no, 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 yes at number four because 500 is less than 600. Great, I is going to be three, which corresponds to a color of yellow. Fine, it's simple. We could think about that a lot more and make it better, but for now it works. Popping in the last part of the code, I'm just setting up a display variable. There's a reason I'm putting it in a variable first and then displaying it next, but that'll come into play as I solve some of those later problems. So what I'm going to do here is use that text mesh pro formatting to get a colored text. I'm gonna show you how that works now. So this is the text mesh pro documentation. I'm gonna to link to this in my video and we'll be referring back to this extensively in the future. So all this does is sets up a list of tags that you can use to customize the rich text of your displays. So the first one we're gonna focus on here is this alpha color. So if I click that, it takes me to the color section and shows me that in this particular case, it's really straightforward. I just use this particular format. And like I mentioned before, we're gonna use hex codes for all of these to dictate what color it should be. So heading back over to this script, you'll see here in the join, we put open color equals, and then I use the item from the index that we determined earlier in the color list, which for that example of 500 meters ends up being this middle yellow color. I close it. Then I'm using a formatted ground height. All this formatting does is say, take all the decimals off and show it with no decimals here. So the ground height is what we calculated up here. Now I'm showing that just to confirm that the code's actually working properly. In the future, we're gonna use this pixel character and define a specific character that we wanna use and we might change the formatting of that. But for now, displaying the ground height is a great way to confirm that it's actually working.
So let's go back to the code and fly our craft horizontally across the ground so that we can show that the color actually changes as our altitude changes. So now rather than flying straight up, I'm going to set us at an angle and start flying. So I'm just going to go ahead and set it up to go horizontal and watch that. Now watch the value there. You see how it dropped below 600 and now it's yellow. Keep watching it. If it drops below 400, it should go green. And if it does that, the green's going to be hard to see against the blue background. So I'll just try to move it around so you can still see it. There you go. So you see it is working. And then it went back up and turned yellow again. So great. I think we've solved our first two problems. Let's go back and confirm. Okay, so back to our problems. We solved the first one by updating the color using the TextMesh Pro formatting. And then the second one, we had to come up with a little bit of a complex formula, but it ends up working really well to calculate the ground height above sea level. So in future videos, we'll go ahead and solve the hardish and hard problems. But to be honest with you, I haven't really thought through exactly how all of those are going to work. Please, if you have any ideas for how to solve these particular problems, go ahead and post it in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. All right, that's all I've got for today. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.